The Apple Vision Pro has finally hit the UK. This will be one of the UK's first devices since they were only out today. And I want to talk about it. Let's do this. So as I said, the Apple Vision Pro has finally hit the UK. I decided to get one of these through the business because the, the work I do is largely to do with productivity, but also because I'm a bit of a technophile and I'm a sad git that lives in his own. I think those are the three criterias for getting one. I'm a bit of a, an early adopter. I'm very into technology and since this was released, I've been intrigued by it. So I decided to get one and what I want to do today is I want to take you through the unboxing which will be in a flashback. I want to take you through the setup and I want to show you my um, experience of using it first. So let's see what's in the box. The stuff. Take this out. And ditch this. And here we have it. The Apple Vision Pro, one of the first in the UK. We have the 512 gigabyte version. It comes in 256, 512 and one terabyte. I was very reticent about getting the 256, although I know I don't need the, the one terabyte. So without further ado, let's undo these straps. Oh, it didn't come off. Probably because I did that wrong. Okay, here goes. Just checking everything's recording. Cue the angelic music. Nestled in its uh, little safety cage. It looks beautiful. Don't think that's a surprise to anyone though. Uh, let's take this thing off first. We'll move this out of the way. See what's underneath. Apple cleaning cloth. Got one of those for my the nano texture on my iPad. Um, additional visor part. So I review talking about this being a spare. It's not a spare. It's uh, thicker than the one that comes on the device. So that if you find if you find yourself unable to open it. So if you find that your eyes are too close to the screen, which can happen, then what you do is you put this one on instead. Ooh, nice texture. And then in here we have some document oh an actual documentation with actual pictures explaining what to do my goodness how long has it been since apple had a product like that i want it tells you how to set it up i might uh, follow those instructions and then in here we have the dual loop it comes with the default strap and what some people are finding is that it doesn't fit, doesn't sit nicely on their face. So this is the alternative strap. I'll obviously try it with the, the normal one first and if need be, we'll try this. And then this is the battery and cable. I think this is one of the things that people have a niggle about. It, the, the headset is lighter because the battery is separate. It supposedly gets you between two, two and a half hours of time. This cable here is removable, so you can swap a battery out if you were willing to spend £200 for a second one. However, they're not hot swappable. So it's impossible to change the battery without the device turning off. However, USB-C, all you need to do is plug it in to charge while you're using it and all will be fine. 
Final color coil. Got a black belt in origami. So um, this is the proprietary little cable. Don't know if that'll focus. This is the proprietary little cable. The connector that goes onto the side. And I've also heard it's worthwhile remembering you've got it plugged in. And here is the charging brick. Uh, there were some issues in the States saying that um, the size of the charging brick wasn't quite up to snuff. Um, this is a 30 watt, so yes, it's the same. Fortunately, I've got bigger chargers, but uh, nice charger, nice braided cable. And that's all that's in there. Okay, here we go. Let me move this battery out of the way for the time being. And let's take this thing off. All of this padding uh, seems to be paper, which is very unusual. Maybe some plastic in the box and the whole thing comes off. Pity that doesn't transform into a stand, really. So, it's heavy. Not sure if it's heavier or lighter than I expected it to be. I don't think it feels overly heavy. I'm going to try it on, not plugged in. Doesn't feel any heavier than I thought it would be. It smells lovely. This feels really nice. As I say, I'm not plugging it in yet. And I've got these, because I wear reading glasses, um, I've got these um, readers that, that plug in. Um, this little thing pulls off. And we can see it in all of its glory. Uh, looking at it, you can actually see the sensors through the glass. I wasn't expecting to be able to see it. I'm not sure if that will show. I'll put it here just in case that didn't show. So this, as far as I'm aware, this is the bit that I would, this comes off. Uh, but this bit here is the bit I was saying it comes with a spare one. So in terms of how the readers get fitted, I don't know. Really good if I can remember how to even get into them. Here we go. So I want to start with them in. I want to make sure. Is that... Oh, it says left and right. Um, that's good. That, oh, then the left one's fallen off. So I'm assuming this means left. How do they fit? There's a curve there, which means... Oh, and they're magnetic, which is good. And then this one fits. Um, and then I put this on. And something I've already seen a lot of uh, reviewers do is talk about making sure you don't pick it up with this bit. You can pick it up with this bit. It's, it's only ma con connected magnetically, so you're likely to drop it. So you always need to pick it up like this. So there we have it. So um, a bit about the device. It's, in terms of cameras, it's got cameras coming out the wazoo. It's got a total of 12 cameras, 13 if you include the LiDAR camera. It's, it's got two high resolution main cameras. I think those are the ones that are used to take photographs and videos. It's got six world facing cameras. So those are the cameras that it uses to see the world around it. Pick up gestures, for example. It's got four eye tracking cameras, so there are actually four cameras looking in towards your eyes, which it uses for various things, not least of which is eye tracking. It's got a true depth camera, which I guess it would use to build a 3D perspective of what it's taken a photograph of, and it has a LiDAR scanner. It's got four IMUs, which are the little devices it uses to, to pick up uh, angle and acceleration and position. So it's sensor mageddon. Sound is piped out the sides and I'm interested to hear that more than anything because 
The reviews I've seen suggest the sound is incredible, which I can't really quite figure out how that would be. Display wise, I'll put the actual resolutions here, but it's got basically more than 4K per eye um, at a pixel density, which is second to none. I believe the pixel density was 16 times the iPhone. The details are here, which apparently is what makes the image crisp. So I'm going to pause the videos and then I'm going to plug the battery in and we'll get it going. Okay, so ready to try this. Uh, first thing I learned from watching other videos is put this in before you try and connect. There's a little dot there and a little dot here. I'm assuming that means that's where you put it on. I watched a video of some reviewer that, took, that said this took them 10 minutes. Um, seems fairly obvious to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up and um, I won't be able to screencast while I'm doing it, but I'll talk you through and if it's boring, I'll just skip through it. And then once I get to the screencastable bit, I'll do it. But I'm going in. Wish me luck. Hi, uh, it's Editing Gordon here. I'm finalising the video uh, the following morning. Uh, I realised as I was going through it, there's a lot of it which is quite time consuming. However, uh, is an insight into how the machine needs to be set up. So I decided to leave it in. It makes the video a bit longer, but if you're interested in the setup process, then worth watching. If you're not interested in the setup process, I'm going to put chapter markers in the video so you'll be able to skip ahead to the bits you want to see. Thanks. So I can see an Apple logo. I'm not at all happy with how it aligns. Not at all. Oh, that's better. It's quite pushing against my face quite hard. Um, and I can see a big hello, the typical um, hello, and it's telling me to press the digital crown. I can see out quite well. It's quite blurred. Uh, press digital crown, select English, select your country, United Kingdom, setting the language. It's really weird the, the, the this is all, oh dimmed lights, see the Apple logo, bring iPhone or iPad nearby to get started. Oh, and you can see this has appeared. I continue. Okay, look. Oh, that's incredibly detailed. There's a thing floating around my camera, uh, my, my phone. <laughs> it's quite disturbing how real it looks. Look at your code to pair optical inserts. I think this must be what was in here. Put it here. Don't know why I put it over here. It's telling me how to use it. Scroll, pick. Okay. Press digital crown to set up your eyes and hands. I'll put it here so that I can see properly. Oh, it's insistent pin. Look at your hands to set up. Flip your hands over. Hand set up complete. Oh, it's gone dark. Look at the dot and tap your fingers together to select it. Let me get rid of this rubbish. So there was a little dot and I clicked on it, looking at the dot. Oh, there's a lot of dots. Now select all the dots around the circle. So there was six and I just looked at them and tapped. Oh, it's changing the lighting. Select more dots to refine your eye setup. One more time in brighter lighting. Oh, it's so white. Completing eye setup. Tick. Persona Beta. Capture how you'll appear in FaceTime and other calls and personalise eyesight. Eyesight is the display. This this here is actually a display. So I'm going to face this way because there's a nice light there. 
and I've seen some stuff about being careful to not make sure your shoulders bunched up. When you're ready, hold Apple Vision Pro at eye level. I wonder if I should use my glasses. I'm going to try it with glasses first. Keep your arms and shoulders relaxed. Remove your glasses to continue. Align your entire face within the frame. Slowly turn your head to the right. Now slowly turn your head to the left. Now tilt your head up. Then tilt your head down. Remove anything covering your eyes or mouth to continue. Next, let's capture your facial expressions. Smile with your mouth closed. Then make a big smile with your teeth showing. Now raise your eyebrows. Close your eyes for a moment. Capture complete. Put Vision Pro back on to continue. Let's see what it looks like, shall we? I had the digital crown. Shouldn't have done that. It says creating persona. This may take up to a minute. Oh, oh my god, I look like a grumpy git. It's strange. And it's recognisably me. The hair's a mess. Um, I'll Now that I've set this up, once I'm screen recording, I'll show you what this looks like. Select eyewear. Oh, I can pick glasses. That's quite cool. It's quite cool that I can have glasses. I'm finding it uncomfortable hitting my nose and I can definitely see under here. So I'm definitely going to be looking to go back to Apple to maybe try and adjust. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to change this thing uh, back in a second. Right, I've changed to the other strap and I want to see if that helps any. Right, welcome to Apple Vision Pro. Press digital crown to open home. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move position. Uh, it's not ideal me facing the window. I'll probably turn off this light and move here so that I'm facing a better wall. And I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I'm back. Um, hopefully it's not too d disturbing a picture. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start screen recording. Okay. So now it's working and it's recording my voice um, and you can see, I don't know how clear it is on the video. I've seen lots of videos of the experience and what the experience looks like and I have to say none of the videos I've seen do it justice. I genuinely feel like I could reach out and touch these things. Um, unbelievable. Uh, so I'm going to just look at uh, some things. Um, what else do I have? Things. I've got files. Uh, oh, encounter dinosaurs. Well, we're here to ex experience it. Let's just do this. The other thing you should notice is... Now, I don't know if this is going to record. What I'm going to do in the meantime is I'm going to stop this video. Feel free to explore, but stay aware of your surroundings. I'm not going to move about. Creatures in this experience can see you and maybe... I don't know why I'm reading it, because... <laughs> so it knows where my wall is. Oh, here's the little butterfly. That is just incredible. That thing's real. Whoa! It's on my finger. That is quite incredible. 
I think there's a bit of lag with my movement. Oh! Now, obviously, because I've got a table that looks a bit weird, but, uh... Oh, man, that looks really... And that looks realistic. Oh, little creature. I feel like if I stood up, this might be better. Interesting, we can see around here where it doesn't quite fit. Little creature is chasing the butterfly. I feel like I could walk up and touch that, but I don't really want to touch that. Should I touch it? I'm going to go and touch it. Oh, I'm not going to touch it. Some zigger's coming. Oh man, that's so Absolutely unbelievable. So much better than I thought it would be. I mean, look at the writing here. So how do I get rid of it? Probably just the digital crown. Ah! So these are what we have. That. Yosemite. Morning light, spring light, I guess these are random lights. Mount Hood. Coming soon, Joshua Tree, the moon. Let's go to this one. Oh. It's night time. I don't want it to be night time. Oh, automatic, that's what I need. Whoa. And if you turn the digital crown, is this digital crown? You can have no environment. Now you won't be able to hear that, but I now sound like I'm there. Right, let's try Yosemite. Oh my god. I, I cannot describe how much the clouds are moving. Honestly, it's it's weirdly accurate. It is unbelievably right. Let's get rid of it. 
Oh yeah, I was going to show you my persona. I imagine you find it in here. Oh. Yeah, this is what I look like. It's not ideal, is it? Can't tell if I'm looking at the person. I think I'll message my daughter and see if she'll do a FaceTime. What time is it? Three o'clock. Um, let's do that. Pull up an app. Right, let's move this off to the side. Just use voice. Are you in the house just now? Question mark. I want to test out my Apple Vision Pro on a FaceTime smiley face. This keyboard is here. Let me look. Literally feels like it's there. Right, I'll wait to see when that message comes in. So obviously there's there's ah if I cover my face you can't see it. Um, it can obviously it's hard to smile. I might have to be a more smiley. Photo sinking yet? Sinking. Right, it's going to take a long time to synchronise. We may come back to that later. I'll put it to the side actually. I can make it smaller as well. It's fine. Um, what else have we got? Music. Let's see what music we can have. Do I have my playlists? Let's put on a Tarashi Gakko. if you can play videos. Ah, so it's not playing. I can't see it neither. Right, okay. That's fine. But it will presumably let me play music. Has this one got... Yeah, that's my favourite song. Um, what else have we got? Apple TV. I'm assuming. Oh, immersive experiences. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Oh, definitely looking at these later. Heard about this one. Uh, what can I play on Apple TV? Must be able to watch a trailer, surely. Let's watch a trailer for Way of Water. Buy a rent for a trailer. I wonder if the trailer's in 3D. It's almost too big. I really want to look at some of these immersive things. Okay, that's worthwhile looking at later. Hasn't downloaded any of my albums yet. That's fine. I haven't replied to my message yet. Let's look at Safari. Uh, so let's go to YouTube. I remember that day. I never forgot it, but a slave. 
Yeah, I'm Deadpool's roommate, blind Al. Ah! I can't see him, but Lord, can I smell him. I have an ace up my sleeve. Old Spice Total Body. More drinking, then I'll leave. So that's not working. It's pointing at it, but it's not until I actually reach it. So it knows where it is. That's incredible. So I can press play. Hi, Peanut. I'm going to need you to come. Oh, here we go. Right, so these are some special videos. Caroline. One, two, three, say cheese. No, I set that right though. Set here. One, two, three. Emily, Emily. Emily, Emily come sit here. I'm taking a video. Oh, what are you talking about? So you're right, you've got it. No, wait, come back, Emily. Emily, Emily I'm not finished. All right, just a good. So that was incredible. And then we have some um, panoramas. So this is one I created. So that looks like a big panorama. But now I can... Whoa! So now I can actually view it as a panorama. That's quite... And it's... Uh, this one was taken very high resolution. Uh, how do I get out of it? Exit view. I can't even stress. This is one that was taken. Oh, Jesus. And this one is almost 360. Oh, I feel a wee bit sick. Right, uh, I think I'm going to stop and I'm going to uh, maybe look at some other content. This was the FaceTime call I did with my daughter. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't recording any audio and this was her screenshot, her screen recording of what she was saying. Um, bit of a freak show. It's juddery because she didn't have a very good signal but she said it wasn't too weird one of the things i wanted to show you is how things stay where they are so i can be playing one of the benefits playing one of, my of videos. the display is if someone's manually filming it's really it with easy me. for them to keep the climber so i'm going to play my video and walk through here you can see on the fridge I've got a shopping list and you can see this shape here that's actually I really enjoyed this blue climb where I, I left like I'm getting back into the swing of things the other advantage of the small form factor is it doesn't draw attention to itself or you when you're filming I was designed to save the world. It's not recording. It's not showing it, but this is where I was. I've got uh, Disney Plus running Marvel Studios Avengers, and you can see. I believe, if you want to, you can just grab one of these. You can almost see. Bizarre. These things are like they're sitting on my table. I mean, it's it's exactly like there. Now, if I go that. Yeah, I can take it here and I can put it on that box. Or I can sit down on the sofa. Yeah, it comes with you. I can sit down on the sofa now. I've got a big TV. Would look to the sky and see. If that trailers would play. But they don't. So these are the 3D movies that are available on my Disney Plus uh, all the Marvel ones which is quite cool a lot of the cartoon ones, cartoon ones probably look incredible Maleficent, Moana 
Oh, the Star Wars ones in three. Star Wars ones. Star Wars ones in three D were cool. So, Apple Vision Pro. What do I think of it? My initial response is that having seen a lot of videos and watched a lot of content, the screen recordings do not do it justice. The picture quality is just so much better than I could have imagined. One of the things you'll notice on um, screen captures and probably my screen captures as well is it looks very juddery. It is, does not seem juddery at all when you're wearing it. It was a little bit uncomfortable and I'm having a bit of issue with it keeps telling me to, to put the Apple Vision Pro a bit higher. I might have to get an appointment at the Apple store just in case the visor is the wrong size. You, you get different size visors. The sound incredibly good. Um, I haven't tried my AirPods Pro but I'll try my AirPods Pro when I watch a movie later but it, uh, it's so much better than I thought it would be. Um, should you get one? I would say if you've got three and a half grand to spare um, and you're into technology then sure. Do you need one? Probably not. I'm going to try over the coming weeks to actually work wearing it um, I actually found the windows too big. I actually found um, having a workspace that was that was usable a bit awkward to have so many things open, um, and I found the 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 keyboard interface a bit clunky. I uh, need to keep remembering though. This is version one of the software. Vision OS two is already in beta and there are already so many improvements to it. The Persona, I will redo the Persona. Um, it looked weird. I'm going to be trying it on a Teams meeting next week. Um, see what people say. But te technologically it's incredible what it's doing because it's created a Persona of you, albeit a wee bit creepy looking, but it's picking up facial expressions, picking up when you smile, picking up when you turn your head, and the person who's watching sees that. And I've seen videos of Persona version 2 in iOS 2, and it's so much better. Um, if you are having a FaceTime meeting with someone who's also wearing a Vision Pro, it's like you're there, apparently. So a few a few tweaks to the to the system will be a good thing in, in Vision 2. The environments, unbelievable. The immersive content, unbelievable. Um, the uh, the spatial videos and photos, uh, I haven't taken any with the the, the Vision Pro. I, I need to do that to see what so much better it is. But certainly the the spatial videos that I took with my iPhone. They, they show us 3D, they certainly look um, better than a normal video. Yeah, it's an incredible piece of tech. So, do I think it will stick? I think um, I think Joe Scott, a uh, tech YouTuber, hit the nail on the head at the start of his video when he quoted these things. Stupid, insanely overpriced, not the future. Nothing more than a luxury bauble that will appeal to a few gadget freaks. These are all things that were said about the iPhone in 2007. And it's worth remembering that without that innov innovation of the iPhone, smartphones wouldn't look like they do now. And I think that's what Vision Pro is, is, is going to do. I don't think it's about this device. I can see why it's so expensive. The tech in it is incredible. I think it's about what this device heralds. Um, I think the idea of spatial computing, while it's a bit tied to this device, is a bit hit or miss. But as, as this device gets smaller and the technology improves, spatial computing is going to be the way people do things particularly since more and more people are working from home after the pandemic. Imagine you're in a Teams meeting, but you're sitting around a table and your colleagues appear to be sitting in the other chairs. That is now close to being a reality. Imagine scenes that we've all seen in sci-fi movies like Iron Man, where 
um, the person is standing in front of a device that's projecting a 3D model that you can actually interact with and move. With Vision Pro, that's a reality. If I'm a 3D modeler, I could have a model. I could create a model, have an image of it. I could be in a meeting, a FaceTime meeting with the client who could be looking at the same object, manipulating the same object. We could both be standing around the object, looking at it, turning it, changing it, pointing at it. The the difference it will make to the speed of reviewing things like 3D models or rapid prototyping. And I think that's what it's about. There's been a lot of debate about Quest 3 and Quest 3 is as good. Um, Firstly, it's not. It's nowhere near as good. Now, it's a lot cheaper. Um, But Quest 3 is fundamentally, I think, a games machine. I don't think this is a games machine. I think I may try and download games as they appear to see what they're like to play, but it's not a games machine. It's exactly as it says it is. It's a spatial computing device. And what spatial computing is, is going to evolve, I think, dramatically. I definitely think this is going to herald a change in how we do things. Maybe not now. Maybe not next year, but in 10 years' time, I think more and more people will be doing spatial computing, just not with a device this size. For content consumption, the movies look great. The 3D movies are, I mean, I've seen 3D movies at the cinema, I've seen 3D movies and 3D TVs, and there's always something a bit less than with them. The couple of samples I took of the 3D movies from the Disney Channel, they look fantastic. They just look incredible. And I think that's the big takeaway for me. The quality of the displays, the quality of the tracking, the quality of everything is just incredible. Um, If you get a chance, book an Apple demo. Go and have a look at it yourself. Even if you have no interest in buying one, it's worthwhile seeing what VR or AR or MR, whatever you want to call it, can look like because it's astounding. Over the next few weeks, I'll be using it and I may post some more videos, but uh, this channel is fundamentally about climbing. So, But if you're interested in seeing more Apple video content, then feel free to subscribe. If you've reached the end, thanks for watching and um, I'll see you in the next one.